Hey everyone, James Reeves, TFB TV here at Enforce Tech in Nuremberg. This is a law enforcement military geared show, so it's very appropriate that I'm here at the Hanel booth with my buddy Felix because Hanel is a very law enforcement slash military oriented company that a lot of people in the United States haven't quite heard about yet. We don't have a lot of your stuff, unfortunately, in the United States, but you make a fantastic short stroke piston AR. This is the CR series, which exactly. I'm very familiar with, love the platform. Tell me everything about it, Felix. So yeah, the CR series is basically, as you said, a short piston driven AR system with a more of a European take on it, so to be honest. Talk to me about the furniture and let's work our way up towards yeah. the muzzle, Felix. Sure. So pretty easy. Um, it's, an, it's an AR, so there's not really much I can explain here. Um, let's start with the buttstock. It's a standard uh, six position adjustable buttstock uh, with our own uh, take on it. Um, here we have the, the basic version, uh, the weapon comes standard with uh, the adjustable uh, cheek piece. Um, of course it's pretty uh, short, but uh, the reason why it's easy, it's not meant to be a precision a sniper a stock where you lay your face on it uh, for hours. It's made as an, as an anchor point where you basically can put your, your jawline on it if you shoot for example with gas mask. Uh, a lot of police units in Germany use uh, ballistic face visors, um, so a long uh, cheek rest wouldn't work, so they use basically a short one. Uh, or for example, if you shoot with a high optic line at night vision on, uh, you can easily uh, create an extra index point uh, on your face uh, with that uh, cheek rest I hit there. Um, Next thing we have on here, uh, every weapon comes standard with an ambidextrous, safe, uh, ambidextrous charging handle that is both sided, so not just one claw on the left side, mm -hmm. like on a standard AR, but uh, two claws, left and right, which are uh, interfacing in the receiver with uh, a steel inlay there. So you got steel clamps in a steel bracket and a steel bridge and no uh, steel on aloe that will wear out over time. That's Interesting. Pretty okay. neat, Very pretty cool. I didn't part. even know about that. Yeah. yeah. That, that's a nice detail we have here. And also nice if it breaks, if you do a lot of dry firing, for example, you just take out the screw, put in a new bridge, and you're good to go. Very cool. Okay, let's keep maintain. moving up. I like the 45 degrees safety. Yeah, it's 60 degrees, to be honest. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was never good at math. Nah, that's, that's good. But um, the neat thing about the safety is it does, it, it does always work. So if even if the weapon is uh, not cocked, you can just put a weapon on safe. If you have a malfunction uh, weapon jam, for example, you can always put the safety on and uh, do your manipulations on the weapon. And you can store it and safe and uncocked so you don't, your springs don't wear out over time. Um, that's a pretty neat part on it. Now talk to me about these pins for the fire yes. control unit. Yes. I mean, they're pretty robust. They are. They are first of all, they are uh, tall sized pins. And uh, second thing is they are captured. So you know those anti-walk pins in ARs. But um, that's basically the same thing. But they are secured by um, a flat face on the one side and a, a washer on uh, the left side, so for, uh, if the weapon is shot a lot and vibrates, they don't walk out. Um, they could walk out because they are solid. Normal AR pins, you know, got those two grooves in there, those are potential breaking points. So our pins are solid and they get secured on the left and the right side, so uh, they're more sturdy, more robust, and don't uh, break or walk off of it. Next thing. That's interesting. Um, the weapon is completely ambidextrous, so uh, of course ambidextrous magazine release and enlarged ping pong paddle on the left side that is enlarged to the front because a lot of guys uh, know the standard AR drill basically where they grab around the magazine release so they don't have to uh, index this little point here. They had a big surface they can grab on and on the left side of course we got the ambidextrous controls with magazine release and the bolt catch. That one works as a simple push button. You pull back, stick your finger under it to capture it, and push it in to loosen your bolt. Very cool. And that's 
some pretty high fencing here. It is, got... it is. We got the feedback from some operators that um, they, and when they're in training, they have an open bolt carried weapon in front of them that they are losing, um, that the bolt goes forward, that they accidentally push the bolt catch, uh, they accidentally push the magazine release. So we got some high fencing around here, down here and up here. So you really have to index those points to uh, loosen up uh, the, the magazine or the bolt. Yeah. Moving forward to the handguard, we've got a little, yes. a Q, it looks like a QD it arm is. there. It is. So on all CR uh, weapons, the handguard is quick detachable. How do I do it? Uh, it's easy. So it, it's German, <laughs> so you. it's extra secure. Um, you got this little knob here. You push that one in. Then you rotate your handguard around, uh, your lever around, it sticks up to the front, and then you can basically pull off the handguard to the front. Very cool, free floating it and is. quick disconnect. Why, why would I want this feature? It's easy, we've got a piston driven system, you maybe use it in adverse conditions, and uh, especially on a free under blackout like we have here, um, it can get dirty because you're shooting most likely with a suppressor. And so it's easy to disassemble with, uh, in, uh, within a couple of seconds. Uh, field strip the weapon, wipe everything clean, reassemble it, and you're good to go. The nice thing about the piston system is you can actually disassemble the gas system, operating rod, the piston. With a direct impingement system, you're just not able to disassemble it, so there's no need to dis quickly detach the handguard. The piston driven, it's a nice addition to keep a good care of your weapon and um, easily disassemble if it's necessary. Multiple settings for the gas system or is it just a, a one self-adjusting system? Depends on the requirement of the customer, especially on the law enforcement side. For example, we got a non-adjustable version of the three, uh, CR300 here. And uh, up here we have, for example, adjustable uh, versions of the uh, 300 Blackout which is adjustable for normal use and suppressor use. And uh, same thing on the CR-308 and 6.5 Creedmoor, where we can adjust for normal and suppressed for the uh, 5.56 or 2.23 version. It's not adjustable. Speaking of which, we've got the 300 Blackout version. Exactly. And then moving over here. Exactly, that's the 2.23 version. We got um, two different kinds of weapons here. Um, the upper one is uh, right now in use by German police departments as a standard um, police rifle, so to say, replacing the MP5. And um, that was a couple of years ago. And that is basically the newer version of it, featuring um, a little bit uh, different furniture. Of course, the stock stays the same, pistol grip is a little bit different. And um, we got the change from uh, Keymod uh, to M-Lock uh, in that case and also adopted a different suppressor, which is the BNT RBS, mm -hmm. which is much more pleasant to shoot um, regarding the uh, gas uh, flow reduction in your face. And uh, therefore, basically two different versions. Um, gas system is totally the same. Barrel length here right now is 11.85 inches um, due to the requirement to fit the, the weapon in police cars. Um, on standard civilian versions, we build a 10 inch, 12 and a half, 14 and a half, and 16 6 5. 16 6 5 uh, is a special length required by German law um, to use the weapon for sport shooting. Yeah, let's go <laughs> over there, right? You got some 6 5s on display here, right? Yes, right. Um, so, the last weapons we have here that's basically our large frame AR setups. The top one is a CR 6 5 chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, featuring our match trigger, for example, and some B5 furniture on there. Um, you may be asked um, for the suppressor um, that we lent from our civilian company, uh, Merkel, which is uh, not associated uh, to the politician, and, uh, <laughs> but it's uh, famous for hunting rifles, and therefore we have a suppressor lineup there. It's also an aluminum suppressor, over barrel, and it features a high volume inside, so the suppression is pretty good. And it's also lightweight, so for a good platform in 6.5, low recoil, light suppressor, um, it's a pretty neat uh, platform. 
Also here the handguard is quick uh, detachable, uh, just because it's a larger platform you're uh, prone to put more weight onto the handguard for, with clip-ons, light, uh, light laser modules for example. We got two levers, um, one on the left side, one on the right side, so you can just rip off the handguard if needed. Um, Below that, we got the 308 version featuring a 14.5 inch barrel, a little bit shorter, like a battle rifle configuration there. Um, basically, the same thing. If you know the 6.5, you know the 308 and vice versa. Right. Just um, a barrel swap is all you need. Yes, basically. So. Well, Felix, I'm really excited that you could walk me through the CR series. Like I said, I've been a fan. I actually <laughs> love short stroke piston operated AR 15s, and yours is an especially good one. Thank you so much yes. for your hospitality. Thank you for stopping by. Of course. It was a pleasure. <laughs> of course. Guys, stay tuned. We're bringing you more from Enforce Tech and IWA.